Now that song really fits in with what I'm going to preach about this morning. Grace. Turn your Bible, if you would, to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Now before I speak to you, I made this announcement last Sunday night. I'll make it again today. We're going to have a little surprise here tonight. I'm not going to tell you what it is. So I want you to come, and I think you'll be pleased by this surprise. Matter of fact, we'll have cake and ice cream to celebrate it. So uh, make sure you come tonight and you'll find out what that surprise is. Um, I've been excited about it all week. And if you come tonight, you'll see why I've been excited. And I think you'll be excited. You'll be pleased as well. It'll bless your heart. So uh, that's 6 o'clock tonight. All right, John chapter 1. In John chapter 1, in verse 15, John said this, John bear witness of him, that's Jesus, and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me, and of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. In other words, grace on top of grace, manifold grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now I'll read that last one again. It says, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now that verse tells us that Moses was the lawgiver, and Christ is the grace giver. Folks, grace did not come from any mortal man. Grace did not come from John. Grace did not come from Peter. Grace did not come from Paul. Christ is the source of all grace. He is the origin of grace. He is the fountain of grace. Now, grace was dispensed to Paul just like it is dispensed to us. It's the gospel and doctrines of grace that we preach. But Jesus Christ, He's the source, He is the origin of the grace God dispensed to Paul and to us and to all men. And folks, the grace that came by Jesus Christ is the same grace that we preach today. Uh, the grace that came by Jesus Christ had the same definition in His day as it does in our day. It meant the same thing in His day as it does in our. You see, well, what is the definition of that grace? It is the undeserved, unmerited blessing and favor and salvation of God bestowed upon sinners who have not earned it nor deserve it. Let me say that again. Grace. What is it? It is the undeserved and unmerited blessing, favor, and salvation of God bestowed upon sinners who do not earn it nor deserve it. That's grace. And Christ exercised and demonstrated that grace throughout His public ministry and at the end of His ministry by His death when He abolished the law and established a new covenant of grace in His place. Now first of all this morning, we're going to look at four examples of that grace that came by Jesus Christ in His public ministry. We're going to look at four people who received the unearned and undeserved grace of God instead of the wrath of God that they deserved. Now, first of all, turn to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Here in John chapter 8 is the story of a woman that was caught in the act of adultery. She was an adulterer. She was caught in the very act. And in John chapter 8, verse 3, John 8, 3, it says, 
and the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said to them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast his stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are all those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn thee, go and sin no more. See what he said? Neither do I condemn thee, go and sin no more. Now, the Pharisees were right about something. They were right about the woman taken in the act of adultery. The punishment of the sin of adultery under the law, it was death. It was. I'm going to quote the verse to you. You write it down beside that verse in John. And I'm going to quote it to you in Leviticus 20.10. Leviticus 20.10 says, And the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife, even he that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. And see what he said? He said, The adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. So the law said that the adulteress, this woman right here, should be put to death. But Jesus forgave her instead. So he did what the law did not and could not do. There was no mercy for adulteresses under the law. And so what Christ did for that woman was an act of undeserved and unmerited grace. She deserved to die according to the law, but Christ forgave her instead. The law said, you must die, but the grace that came by Jesus forgave her instead. The law that came by Moses could not forgive her, but the grace that came by Jesus Christ did, and it still does. And folks, isn't that not the same grace that we preach today? Yes, it is. It certainly is. Another example. Turn your Bible this time to Luke 7. Luke chapter 7. In Luke chapter 7, Jesus was eating a meal in a Pharisee's house. And a prostitute came into the house. And it says in Luke 7, 38. Luke 7, 38. And she, that's the woman, the prostitute, stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisees which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this that touches him, for she's a sinner. Now look down at verse 44. And he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house, Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore, I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. 
for she loveth much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. What a statement. Now folks, that woman right there was a prostitute. And prostitutes were put to death under the law that came by Moses. No mercy for them. Write this verse down beside that verse. I'm going to quote it to you. Deuteronomy 22, 21. Deuteronomy 22, 21. It says, Then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of the father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she die, because she hath brought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house. So shalt thou put evil away from among you. See, the law that came by Moses said that this woman, this prostitute, should have been stoned to death. But the grace that came by Christ forgave the woman instead. Prostitutes were stoned under Moses' law, but the grace that came by Jesus Christ forgave the woman, and He still forgives them today. Again, isn't that the same grace? that we believe in and preach today? Yes, it is. The law said, stoner. Jesus said, forgiver. That's grace. The very same grace you and I believe and preach today. That's why John said that grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And it could be seen throughout His public ministry and how He dealt with sinners. Look again to Luke 18. <clears throat> <clears throat> in Luke chapter 18 <clears throat> excuse me we begin reading in verse 10 Jesus gave a parable of two men one was a self-righteous Pharisee and the other of them was a publican and a sinner and here's the story Luke 18 10 Jesus said, Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I'm not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. Now that publican was a sinner and a lawbreaker. He was the complete opposite of the Pharisee. He did not keep the law. And he was guilty of the sins of extortion and adultery like the Pharisee said. You know, the publicans were tax collectors. Uh, they collected taxes for the, for the Roman government from the Jewish people. And in the Jewish writings of the Jews, publicans were reckoned as thieves and murderers and robbers. Publicans were not allowed to be a witness in any of their courts of law. And the Jews were forbidden to have any association with publicans. They were told not to even allow them into your house. Don't let them in the house. And they were people, the publicans were people, who were destitute of good character they were very impressive in the way they collected taxes, and they were dissolute in their lives. The Jews associated them in character with thieves and adulterers and with the profane and dissolute. That's how the Jews looked upon publicans. And according to the law that came by Moses, this man was without hope. 
the law that came by Moses showed no mercy to sinners like this old publican. But it was pronounced justified, and the Pharisee was not. How was it justified? By the grace that came by Jesus Christ. All that man did that day was to own up to his sins and then ask God to have mercy on him and he was justified. He was not baptized. He didn't keep the law. He did not do anything in the way of good works. All his works were bad. And he was hated by the Jews who kept the law. The law said to publicans, I cannot justify you, but the grace that came by Jesus Christ says, I can justify you, and I can still do it today. Today, you and I are justified the same way as this publican. Anybody justified today before God is justified exactly the same way this man was way back in the time of Christ. You owned up to your sin, you asked God to have mercy on you and save you, and He did it. That's all you did. You did what the publican did, and you're justified. The Pharisee who kept the law all his life, he walked away unjustified, uncleared, lost, and probably died and went to hell. The old publican who was a rascal, a sinner, an evil, wicked man, he was the one that ended up justified that day. That's grace. He did not merit or earn what Jesus gave him, did he? Again, look at Matthew 21. Matthew 21. Now here's another story that Jesus told. An amazing story. There's a statement he makes in here that's just unreal. And you'll see grace. Matthew 21, 28. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. And he came to the second and said likewise, and answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whither them twain did the will of his father? They said to him, the first. Now look at this. Jesus saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and you believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him. And ye, when you had seen it, repented not afterward that you might believe him. Isn't that amazing? Now, what I want you to notice about this, first of all, is the people that Jesus said these words to. Look at it. Notice who they are. Look at verse 23. That's Matthew 21. 23. And when he was come into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, By what authority dost thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? Now do you see who he's talking to? He was talking to the chief priests and the elders in the temple of God. These were the men that kept the law taught the law, and were very, very religious. They fasted, they prayed, they gave alms, they worshiped God in the temple. But yet Jesus said, the harlots and the publicans who did not keep the law, who were actually condemned by the law, would enter into the kingdom of God and that they, the scribes, would not. And what do these people do to enter the kingdom of God? It says they repented and believed the gospel preached by John the Baptist. That's all they did. You see, the law said, I cannot open the door into the kingdom of God to harlots and publicans and sinners. 
But the grace that came by Jesus Christ said, I can open the door to you into the kingdom of God. Come on in. And they did. <clears throat> and folks, it's the same way today. Publicans, harlots, sinners enter into the kingdom of God today the same way these did by the unmerited and undeserved grace of God. Folks, here are four demonstrations of the grace that came by Jesus Christ during His public ministry. He forgave and justified adulteresses, harlots, and publicans who did not keep the law and who were all condemned by the law. There was no hope of forgiveness for them under the law that came by Moses. But they were all forgiven and justified by the grace that came by Jesus Christ. These people that we've looked at today did nothing in the way of good works. In fact, all their works were bad, and the law condemned them all. But yet Christ forgave them, and they entered into the kingdom of God, and the highly religious people and priests and elders and Pharisees were shut out of the kingdom of God. The harlots went in, the Pharisees were shut out. Folks, that's the same grace that we preach today. We are saved and justified and enter into the kingdom of God by grace, through faith, without works. We today are just like these four people. We did not deserve nor merit what Christ did for us or for them. It is a gift. Grace in the Bible, the grace of Christ is a gift. Those people did not earn it. They didn't deserve it. But Jesus gave it to them in spite of it. Now, <clears throat> grace also came by Jesus Christ by His death on the cross. By His death, Jesus abolished the law that came by Moses and established a new covenant of grace in His place. Look at Hebrews 10. He abolished the law that came by Moses and established a new covenant of grace in His place. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10, 8. Hebrews 10, 8. Above when He said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin thou wouldest not, neither hast pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. Now watch it. He, that's Christ, taketh away the first. That's the old covenant law that came by Moses. That he may establish the second. That's the new covenant of grace. By the which, the new covenant, we are sanctified to the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Now you know back there in John, he said grace came by Jesus Christ. Hebrews says the new covenant came by Jesus Christ. You see they're one and the same. The new covenant is a covenant of pure grace. For in the new covenant... God provided a perfect sacrifice that takes away all sins and pardoned all sinners that the law that came by Moses couldn't do. Look at Acts 13 in your Bible. Acts 13, 38, 39. Acts 13, 38, 39. Be it known to you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. You know, folks, that verse right there, Acts 13, 38, 39, to me is a perfect description 
of the law that came by Moses and the grace that came by Jesus Christ. And it shows us the big difference between the law that came by Moses and the grace that came by Jesus Christ. By His sacrificial death on the cross, Christ forgives the sins the law could not forgive and pardons sinners that the law could not pardon. We saw a demonstration of this in the public ministry of Christ when He forgave sinners who could not be forgiven by the law that came by Moses. Thus the cross is the heart of a new covenant. And it's the cross where we find the unsearchable riches of the grace that came by Jesus Christ. Christ dispensed His unmerited and undeserved grace throughout His public ministry on earth, and especially by His death at the end of His ministry when He abolished the law that came by Moses and established that new covenant of grace in His place. You know, one purpose in writing the Hebrew epistles, Hebrews through Revelation, which by the way we study on Sunday night and Wednesday night, the purpose of those books is to explain to the Hebrews, the Jews, that a change had taken place and that they were no longer under the law, it had been abolished, and they were under a new covenant of grace, and that this new covenant of grace was so much better than that old covenant law. And the writers of the Hebrew Christian epistles encouraged the people they wrote to to come into a full knowledge of that grace of the new covenant. Now I'm going to quote a few verses to you. You write them down, I'll quote them. In 2 Peter 3.18, Peter writing these Hebrew believers said, he says, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Both now, now folks, the grace that he said to grow in is the grace of the new covenant. Now, they knew all about the law. They grew up under the law. They grew up under the law. Peter says, grow up in the grace. The grace of the new covenant. In Hebrews 13.9, Hebrews 13.9, Paul told these Hebrew believers, he said, be not carried away with divers and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. The meats that Paul referred to in that verse were the meat offerings of the law and the dietary laws of the law forbidding the eating of certain meats. The grace in that verse is the grace of the new covenant that freed them from the law concerning the meats of the old covenant. He says be established with grace. Now they were established with the law. They knew all about that. Now Paul says, be established with grace of the new covenant, you see. Again, in 1 Peter 4.10, Peter said to these Hebrew believers to be good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Be a good steward of the manifold grace of God. That's 1 Peter 4.10. You see, the grace of the new covenant is manifold. That is, it's multiplied many times in many ways. And they were instructed to be good stewards of that grace. Now, in the next part of this message right here, and this is important, I want to show you that that grace that came by Jesus Christ came while He was still on this earth. Let me say that again. The grace that came by Jesus Christ came when He was still on earth before He went back to heaven. This grace that came by Christ did not come when He went back to heaven. It came while He was still on the earth. I'm going to give you a list of the gifts of grace 
that we enjoy today that came into being while Christ was still on the earth. These things did not come into being when Jesus went back to heaven. They came into being while He was still on the earth. Now listen carefully. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believed in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Let me ask you, when did God give His only begotten Son? When He went back to heaven or while He was still on earth? It's on earth that that happened. Christ was lifted up on the cross. Whosoever believed in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. When did that happen? Heaven or earth? Earth. <coughs> Christ abolished the law of Moses on earth. Christ broke down the middle wall petition between Jew and Gentile while He was still on earth. <coughs> he gave Himself a ransom for our sins while He was still on the earth. He died for our sins, raised again for our justification while still on earth. He made reconciliation for sinners while He was still on the earth. He would deliver our offenses and raise again for our justification while He was still on the earth. Christ died for the ungodly while He was here. We are reconciled to God by the death of His Son while He was here. Christ loved the church, gave Himself for the church while He was on earth. The law that came by Moses was nailed to the cross while He was on earth. Christ came in the world to save sinners when? While He was still on earth. Christ abolished death and had brought life and immortality to light when? While He was still on earth. Christ tasted death for every man when? In heaven? No, on earth. He became flesh and blood to destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil when? On earth. He became flesh to become a merciful and faithful high priest to make reconciliation for our sins while on earth. Christ purged our conscience from dead works. When? On earth. Christ took away the first covenant and established a new covenant in His place. When? On earth. Christ offered one sacrifice for sins forever on earth. Christ offered one offering to perfect us forever on earth. Christ redeemed us by His blood as a lamb without spot and blemish while He was here on earth. Christ bore our sins in His own body on the tree while on earth. Christ suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that He might bring us to God while He was here on this earth. Christ became the propitiation for the sins of the whole world on earth, not in heaven. Christ gave His flesh for the life of the world on earth. Christ, the Good Shepherd, laid down His life for the sheep while He was here. Christ was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities while He was here. Christ's soul was made an offering for our sins while He was here. Folks, these are the blessings and accomplishments of Christ's earthly ministry. These things did not come to pass after Christ went back to heaven and sat down at God's right hand. They all came to pass while He was still living on this earth. These are the major accomplishments of Christ's earthly ministry. This is what He came to do in His earthly ministry. This is why Christ became flesh and dwelt among us. And these are the major doctrines of the church under grace. What you just heard is what Christ did for us when He was on earth. These are the blessings and promises he sent the apostles to preach after His resurrection. They were all sent to preach while he, what He accomplished on the earth. And we're saved by what He did for us in His earthly ministry, not His heavenly ministry. I mean, it's ridiculous to say that Christ sent Paul and the apostles to preach just the opposite of what He accomplished while He was on earth. He has one ministry, not two. The ministry of the apostles was to preach and explain to the world what Christ accomplished in His earthly ministry. And you just heard a number of them. His so-called heavenly ministry is an extension of His earthly ministry. While He did what He did for sinners on this earth, He applies to them today when they believe the gospel. 
what he accomplished while on earth, he proclaims today from heaven through the epistles of the apostles and those who witness for him. All of the major doctrines of salvation that Paul wrote about are based directly upon what Christ did while he was still on this earth. <clears throat> and that grace that God dispensed to Paul in Ephesians chapter 3 to preach to the Gentiles, that grace came by Jesus Christ in his public ministry and by his death on the cross at the end of his ministry on the earth. The grace that came by Jesus Christ, according to John 1, 17, came during his public ministry on earth before he went back to heaven. We're not saved by what Christ does in heaven, but what he did when he was on this earth. It was on the earth that the law that came by Moses was abolished. It was on earth that the grace that came by Jesus Christ came into this world. Now you see that point? It's important to note that and understand that. People say, yeah, you can't follow the earthly ministry of Christ. Let me tell you something. You, you heard the list. You heard the things that Christ accomplished. You're saved by what Jesus did down here, not what He's doing in heaven right now. He didn't die for you in heaven. He did not suffer and bleed and die for you on a cross in heaven. There is no cross in heaven. There's no death there. There's no suffering there. It all happened right down here. That's what you're saved by today. And that's when the grace of God came. He said, grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. It came during His earthly ministry. We can see Him demonstrating that grace throughout His ministry. When He saved and justified and forgave sinners who did not merit it nor earn it. And especially at the end of His ministry, when He died to institute a new covenant of grace that can save all men, no matter who they are or what they are. That's when grace came. It didn't come with John. It didn't come with Peter. It didn't come with Paul. It came by Jesus Christ. And I say again, you know, Paul said the dispensation of... He says, if you've heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was committed to me, to you, would, that grace dispensed to Paul is the grace that came by Jesus Christ. It's the grace that we preach today. By the way, that, that grace has been dispensed to us as well as Paul. It's the gospel and doctrines of grace. It's the good news that God will save people today who don't deserve it and do not merit it. Jesus preached that, practiced that throughout His earthly ministry, and we continue to do that today. And I hope you understand that this morning. But anyway, thank God for the amazing, wonderful grace that came by Jesus Christ. I'm so glad that that grace has been applied to me. You know, the Bible says to receive not the grace of God in vain. You know, that Paul warns you about that. You say, well, how could a person receive the grace of God in vain? I'll tell you how. By trying to obtain it by works. People believe, well, God will be gracious to me and show favor to me and save me if I do certain works. That's receiving the grace of God in vain. That grace will not save. The grace that saves is the unearned and undeserved favor and blessing and salvation of God that He bestows upon sinners who have not earned it nor deserve it. That's true saving grace. And that's why the Bible says that grace is the gift of God, the gift of God, the gift of God. It says it over and over again. You know, if God says something once, that's enough. But when He says it over and over again, it's obvious He's trying to get our attention. Why? Because there are people today that say, oh yeah, we believe in salvation by grace, but... Here's what you've got to do to get the grace. And they'll give you a long list of, of works you've got to do. That is not saving grace. That's counterfeit grace. And it'll send you straight to hell. The grace that saves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Don't ever doubt it. Let us pray. Our Father, I thank you for that wonderful, amazing grace, the marvelous grace that came by Jesus Christ. Lord, what a big change took place when that grace came. 
God, we see you today doing things that were just unheard of under Moses' law. Saving sinners who are condemned by the law. Saving sinners who do not merit it nor deserve it. God, if we're saved today, we're not saved because we earned it or because we merited it. It was given to us as a gift. We did not deserve it nor merit it. And I pray that those who listen to this program today, maybe on YouTube or video or whatever, I, they'll understand that grace is the gift of God. It's you extending your hand and offering man a free pardon from his sins by simple faith and faith alone in Christ who died for their sins, paid for them in full, was resurrected from the dead. God, I thank you that you made salvation by grace through faith without works. In Jesus' name, amen.